You tell them I'm coming, and hell's coming with me, you hear? Hell's coming with me! You know, for the most part, I've been uh, very supportive of Brent Venables since he took over to Oklahoma because of the shady situation that he took over from Lincoln Riley that was a um, unique situation that nobody's ever really had to deal with before as a first-year head coach. But um, I seen an article the other day from CBS Sports and uh, read and learned some stuff about Brent Venables' tenure here that I really didn't really wasn't quite aware of and uh it's got me sort of rethinking my position i still think brent venables may be able to get the job done but now i'm starting to have a few doubts about a few things that maybe maybe there are some red flags here that we might need to think about let's talk about it This is the home of the Common Joe and the Common Sally in the know, even more so than Hall's media talking heads. And here they come once again, right on me, and it's the Outlaw Posse. Now, in effect, today's four horsemen shout outs go to Doug Fleetwood, Richard Burton, Corrections 101, and Taddy Sailor are mounted up and saddled up and ready to go. And they're going to help us with today's college football invasion. Also, you can like, share, comment, and subscribe to this channel. Those are the big four, and they're all absolutely free. But if you want a little bit more, join the Outlaw Posse. Get your badge. Get deputized. Get your random four horsemen shout like those four just did, as well as possibly be the comment of the day, which is later on the show. All you got to do is hit that little join button. It's not for $2.99 a month. That's just 75 cents a week. That's just a half a bottle of water for the Outlaw, and you'll be deputized, and you'll be in the Outlaw Posse. Also, if you got any ideas for the show, or if you even want to be on the show, hit me up on Twitter, a.k.a. X, at OCF Productions. Now, getting right to it here, I uh, saw a little article on CBS Sports that sort of, you know, like I like to say from time to time, to steal a catchphrase from the uh, Arsenio Hall show from back in the day, things that make you go, hmm. And uh, this did make me go, hmm. You know, because I've been a staunch supporter of Brent Venables and giving him time and being patient because of the horrid situation he took over from the shady one, as we know, in Oklahoma circles as Tebow, T-B-O-W. That's the acronym for the bitch out west. That being Stinky Linky, Linky Boy, Lincoln Riley of the USC Skittle Shitters. But uh, I'm going to go ahead and bring this article up for you guys so I can show you exactly what has me. Throwing up a few red flags now. It says here from CBS Sports, Arnold was benched for a largely unheralded true freshman, Michael Hawkins Jr., a nearly unmatched quick hook for a player of Arnold's stature. Arnold had a tremendous amount of pressure to be the face of the program put on him. Rather than trying to protect him from it, Oklahoma staff added to it. After turning the ball over three times in the first half against one of the nation's top defenses in Tennessee, Arnold was pulled unceremoniously. Now, in defense of Oklahoma, I don't know if that put more pressure on Arnold or not, but um, when you have three or four turnovers like that, they sometimes they'll even pull you in NFL games. And if you're striving to be an NFL player and uh, you want to be treated as an adult, make adult money, as I've said numerous times, these are not kids. These are young men, so quit calling them kids. Then you need to be treated like a man. You make mistakes and you get punished for them. That's what happens. But there are some things here that I'm not really in agreement with as far as the Oklahoma coaching staff and Brent Venables. It says during back to the article here, it says during an embarrassing 34 to 3 loss to Texas with Hawkins at the helm, Oklahoma coach Brent Venables said the offensive staff never considered putting Arnold in. He later said, Oh, you would likely redshirt Arnold publicly. There was little indication that Arnold would be a part of the program's plans for the rest of the year. On Monday, Venables announced the plans changed again. Arnold will return to the start lineup against Ole Miss after burning his red shirt off the bench in a loss to South Carolina. He was inserted in the lineup down 21 to nothing after Hawkins turned the ball over twice in one of the most embarrassing 
home losses and program history, Hawkins' red shirt was also burned in the same game. He burnt two red shirts at probably the most important position in college football or any kind of football, the quarterback position. He burnt two red shirts at the same time. Now, if you're going to red shirt the guy, um, don't get all helter skelter about it and all, all pansied up and, and, and knee jerk and take Michael Hawkins out of the game after just two turnovers. Um, if the red shirt hadn't have been, if he hadn't said he was going to red shirt him and then he put him in, it might not be so bad. But don't go through the process of redshirting somebody or putting a red shirt on them and then burning the shit just one quarter in. <laughs> uh, like I said, if you hadn't put a red shirt on him, yeah, go ahead, yank him. Just like you did Jackson Arnold, yank Michael Hawkins in the same fair way. But I don't know, man. It just it's not a very good look for Brent uh burning two red shirts in one game at the same position. Um Venable's decision to yank Arnold back in the starting lineup days after claiming he would be red shirt is one of the most recent head scratching offensive management decisions, especially as the program moves on to its third offensive coordinator in the past calendar year. There should be serious concerns that the longtime defensive coordinator is out of his depth dealing with the dynamics in the most important position in football, which is what I just said. Here's another one that really bothers me. I didn't know about this. Last season, Arnold lost his red shirt last year because Oklahoma played him in garbage time for four snaps against SNU and Iowa State. He didn't even throw a pass. He just wasted snaps. Why would you do that? Why would you put at risk a, a player's red shirt and burning a red shirt uh, for garbage time where you're not even going to get any reps? You're just going to let him go in and hand the ball off and down it. That's not very good player management. Now, while Brent Venables may know defense, and he may be a great fiery speaker, <laughs> this right here reeks of poor player management, poor management of your organization. You're, you're supposed to be the CEO. So that's the article from CBS Sports. Um, like I said, what really bothered me was the last part that he actually burned a red shirt last year for four snaps in garbage time where Jackson R wasn't even allowed to pass the ball from what they said. I don't know. I didn't watch the game. You guys and gals tell me in the comment section if that is the case. CBS is usually pretty accurate about those things, so I'm just going to take them at their word. Now for the staff management. Now he's went through Ted Roof as a defensive coordinator. Ted Roof probably didn't need to be gone, but Ted Roof should have never been hired. He was in a bad position when he come in at Oklahoma. You know, you're making a uh, coaching uh, change in the middle of recruiting season. You need to get people in here quick. I can understand maybe the rush to hire somebody that had experience. But Ted Roof um, was way past his prime. And it was just, to me, a lazy hire. Once again with Seth Luttrell um, and Joe John Finley and keep, keeping Bill Biedenbaugh. Um or beating Bo, however the hell you want to say his last name. I really don't care how you pronounce it, the semantics. But what I'm trying to talk about here is the fact that a lot of these guys that he's keeping or employing are directly, in, or not directly, but maybe even indirectly in some way connected to Bob Stoops. One thing he's just like, one man he's talking about, I'm not going to make any coaching changes in the middle of the year. I'm not going to fire anybody. And then he fires Seth Luttrell which he probably needed to be fired. But you shouldn't have said that in the beginning. You shouldn't corner yourself. It seems like Brent has a habit of doing that sometimes. Um, Kel Gundy, the Kel Gundy situation. Uh, he should have stood up for Kel. Kel said something he shouldn't have said. But I don't think Kel should have been forced to resign. And people come in here and, and say that naive BS. Oh, Kel wasn't forced to resign. He resigned on his own for the better of the program. Yeah, he did do it for the better of the program, but he was absolutely forced to resign. He was either going to resign or they was going to fire him. That's the bottom line. If you don't believe that, then uh, I mean, I'm just saying, that's sort of naive. I, I'm not trying to be a jerk, but that's sort of naive. And now, you know, he, he fired Ted Roof as well. 
But these are all guys that he's hiring. And the one thing that keeps bubbling up for me with a lot of these guys, like Bill Biedenboe, is that these are guys that are associated either directly or indirectly with Bob Stoops. And if Grant is hiring people based on the Bob Stoops connection or if he's being pressured in some way, which he probably is, and I'm not saying he is, then that needs to stop. Um, just like Bob Stoops, man. I don't mind Bob Stoops being involved in the program. If, I'm an Oklahoma, if I was an Oklahoma fan, I wouldn't mind Bob Stoops hanging out and being around, and, you know, giving his opinion every once in a while, um, going to the games, watching the games from press box, that kind of deal. But uh, I know Bob coached the bowl game last year, or not last year, but the, the year that Lincoln Riley left, he coached the bowl game. He's a coach in the UFL, and people say he don't have that itch to coach anymore, but I absolutely believe he does because he's coaching in the UFL. And people are, oh, that's not as much pressure. It's still coaching organized football and making very stressful decisions in a semi-professional league. There's still pressures there, regardless of what people want to say. Um, Any coach in that bowl game. So I think Bob does have the itch. I think in some way, some ways that Bob would like to be the head coach in Oklahoma again. He's not going to probably do it. I'm just saying that he does have that slight itch, and uh, he just don't want to deal with the new pressures that go along with head coaching. That's why. But you can't just be halfway in between and half not, Bob. You're either, you either want to be a head coach or you don't. So – it's one or, the, one, one or the other, man. So don't say you don't want to be a head coach anymore when you're absolutely a head coach right now. That's all I'm saying because it's sort of it's sort of like talking out of both sides of your mouth, and it's slightly hypocritical in my opinion. Uh, Bob, um, like I said, I think Bob would love to be the head coach of Oklahoma again. It's just he don't want to have the certain pressures – and to deal with the NIL and the transfer portal now is something that he didn't have to deal with as a head coach. And I think he just wants some of the fame and some of the some of the um, attention that goes along with it, but he don't really want to be the head coach. And that's got to stop, in my opinion. I could be wrong. Um, you guys may disagree with me. But I just think that what I'm trying to say in this message here is that if Brent Venables – is hiring and doing stuff uh, as far as, you know, maybe being pressured by the Bob Stoops contingent out here, it needs to stop. And it may not be happening, but I'm just saying if it is, it needs to stop. Brent Venables needs to put his own stamp on the program and maybe go out and hire people that, that he wants to hire that have no connections to Bob Stoops. Now, if Brent Venables, for some reason, does get fired, and if he's no longer the head coach at Oklahoma next year or the year after, where do you go with that? I noticed a trend with Oklahoma, and it's worked for Oklahoma. Usually they hire assistants as head coaches. They usually hire guys that, that are, have not had previous head coaching experience for the most part in their history in college football. Even going as far back as Barry Switzer, he was an assistant before he took over at Oklahoma. Same thing with Gary Gibbs. Same thing with John Blake. The only one, the only outlier in that's Howard Schnellenberger. Bob Stoops was an assistant. Lincoln Riley was an assistant. Grant Venables was an assistant. What I'm saying is if, you, if Oklahoma wants to get back to national championship contention, and not just conference championship contention. They want to be at the big, big table. I think Oklahoma, in their next coaching search, if Brent Venables doesn't work out, which that's a big might, or if, that's a big if, <laughs> I think y'all should go after a coach that has head coaching experience. I think y'all need to pony up and do just like Alabama did with Nick Saban and go after a big name. And that's all I got to say about that. If you don't mind, there's a little heart down here with a little money dollar sign in the middle. If you want to make a one-time donation to the program, smash that heart, throw a few dollars in the coffers. Also, as I said before, you can join the Outlaw Posse as well. It's not two ninety nine a month, seventy five cents a week. It's just a half a bottle of water for the Outlaw. You'll get your badge. You'll get deputized. You'll be in the Outlaw Posse. 
You'll get your random four horsemen shout out as well as possibly be the comment of the day. KMCA to all the other teams. Class is now officially dismissed.